the New York Yankees and fall 6-2. to two. We were expecting this, not expecting too much, but we were expecting them not to have a series win, but just a solid put up a fight and with Edwin Jackson. Edwin Jackson pitching, it was suboptimal to say that the Blue Jays were going to get the victory. However, after that game, the Blue Jays head on over to Arizona, where they had a very rough stretch in Arizona, getting swept by the Arizona Diamondbacks at home, and they lost um, three straight games by the Arizona Diamondbacks, and it was a very rough, rough stretch for the Blue Jays, where they're coming in, they they got swept by the Arizona Diamondbacks, and then um, they lost on Monday to Baltimore, but they did pick up the win yesterday, and today they will look to pick up the series win, but currently they are in a pitching, a rain delay. So, we hope that um, this trend continues forward for the Blue Jays, and we hope that the Blue Jays can bounce back and just put up some solid games for the for the fans who are desperately wanting to see the Blue Jays succeed and just for their own sake. We believe that Charlie Montoya actually has been trying to shuffle things up to get some things going in the ball club. We have seen Charlie um we have seen Charlie um um band music before the games trying to make his club focused for the game, and then he doesn't want it too quiet, he states, he says it's going to be awkward, but he wants it in a way where the players aren't distracted and are focused and can reflect on the game they had or are going to play. After this, Montoya said that he wishes that the players start to play music and celebrate and hope to have a bond. And I praise um Charlie Montoya for this, as I feel like he's the only manager that would do this, because... He's a really good guy for having this group of players who are not as strong and who are who are young, who are in uh not immature but immature in the sense where their baseball experience is limited. So to so, to so have Charlie Montoya be a mentor for them is a really a really blessing for them in, in my opinion. And Charlie Montoya also was dead honest this past Sunday after getting swept by um, Sunday, when reporters asked him um, if Edwin Jackson was going to start on Wednesday, and then at that time he said, "Yeah, we have no other choice, so Edwin Jackson must start for the Blue Jays," and we respected we respected him for that decision, and uh, we respect him for that decision because um, Charlie was being brutally honest, and that's what we want from a manager. Uh, we know that Sean Reed Foley in Buffalo, we had. And our pitching depth in <coughs> Buffalo, excuse me, is not the strongest. We have shot players like Sean Reed Foley underperforming with his command, still yet to show promise. Besides that, a couple of good starts last September. We have players like Andrew Sopko, who we got for John Axford, trying to get in the groove of things at AAA after having a fantastic um, AA start to the year. But yeah, we don't have really have any pitching depth on this team. That can help right away. And for Charlie to be dead honest. It was super nice of him. And however we did not see Edwin Jackson start in the game last night. He was. He did um, come into the game in the second inning. Where he did have a pretty solid start. Going five innings. Of only giving three earned, earned runs. So for Edwin Jackson. That is very solid. Very solid. But no disrespect to the guy. He's a very guy, nice guy, Ejax, all the Blue Jays players call him. He's a very nice guy, and he doesn't care about his stats, he said, after one getting blown up by the Padres. He said it just hurts him that he can't help the team win, and that's what we want, guys who are team players. So, as we mentioned about uh, Edwin Jackson and the Blue Jays, we have had the opener, who was Derek Law, in the game yesterday. And coming from Tampa Bay, um, Charlie Montoya is prone to having these openers where they are um, coming into the game um, in Tampa Bay in the first inning and just providing strikes for the ball club, trying to get a spark going. And and that was the only reason they had it was because they had a limited amount of pitchers or not good enough pitchers, and we see all Ryan Stanek do it, and he's been flawless 
in his career as the opener. And then we saw the Blue Jays experimenting with Daniel Hudson. Then yesterday, we saw Derek Law. And in Tampa Bay, uh, Charlie was familiar with Sergio Romo as well. So I wanted to know after this podcast to get your thoughts on the opener and how you feel about the opener and how you ultimately think how it can affect the ball club in a positive way. Personally, I do not mind the opener. I feel like since the Blue Jays are in a deficit in terms of pitching, it helps them overall. It makes them a more better team in terms of um, having the opener um, for the long term because they don't want to sacrifice young arms and I feel like by giving the opener, it can get guys in the bullpen more playing time. You can get guys in the minor more playing time down there to get seasoning. And ultimately, it's not the worst idea. Being a pitcher, you're meant to throw strikes. You want to throw strikes. And Derek Law did get um, give up a couple of uh, a hit and a walk, but did get out of the inning. And then he set the flow for the rest of the game, where E. Jack came into the game and then gave us five innings of work. And personally, I, I'd like to see the opener more often. I'd like to see the opener with guys like Alvis Luciano, personally. I feel like it would give him more experience and he'd be benefit to that role. Guys like, um, uh, maybe guys like David Phelps when he comes back. Although we may see him um, as a closer once Ken Giles will be traded or once he gets traded. Or we may see Jordan Romano up in the opener role. But personally, I feel like the opener is a great idea in terms of for the Blue Jays. Just for the Blue Jays. I want to, just speaking for the Blue Jays. And I feel like Charlie Montoyo has experience with the opener, knows what to do with the opener, and knows when to use the opener. And that ultimately will help the Blue Jays. And guys, you have to remember that the Blue Jays don't have good pitchers right now on the team. It's simply a fact. We got pitchers like Edwin Jackson going out there. We have pitchers who are struggling. Aaron Sanchez, Blister Issues, Marcus Stroman. To so sacrifice them is very beneficial to have the opener. So after this podcast, since I can't get my opinions with uh, my co-host Rob, I want you guys to message me on Instagram at Blue Jays Wave and DM me where I'll be responding to everyone on your thoughts on the opener and your thoughts on the Blue Jays recent t- rough stretch and rough year overall and how you feel like they can improve and what should they improve on. Speaking on what should they improve on, who's hot right now and who's not? So, who's hot for the Blue Jays right now? There's plenty of players that are hot for the Blue Jays right now. We've seen Eric Sogard really solidify the opening spot in the top of the order, giving the Blue Jays a spark they need. Not a permanent spark they need, but a good enough spark they need. We have Freddie Galvis. Um, he's been he's not been hot. He's been struggling. He has a his batting average has now dropped to point two three six. He has um an OPS lower than six, and which is six ninety one, which is really awful. And he has his on base percentage of point two seventy. But we have to remember, guys, that these are almost identical to his career stat lines. And he has 9 home runs with 25 RBIs. So I feel like if he can be a 15 home run guy, 50 RBIs, and can manage to hit 250 and get that on base percentage to take more walks to get to 300, be a solid addition to the team. And we may see the Blue Jays exercise as a club option, but his defense has been very nice. And for me alone, that proves to him that we should not focus on his offensive numbers too much, as he's a great mentor to the young guys like Guriel, and um, he's just a good guy overall, and his hitting doesn't speak for all of that. Speaking about Guriel, Lourdes Guriel Jr. has been very hot for the Blue Jays as of late. We saw in that Arizona series, he was just ripping the tear off the ball. In the Baltimore series last night, he had, I believe he had three hits last night, um, hitting 265 on the year with uh, 330 on base percentage and 520 slugging. And 850 he has five home runs and 16 RBS. So him having that um, that streak uh, that stint in Buffalo really benefited him for the long run, as I feel like it gave him uh, how it feels like to be in the major leagues and how it feels like to the, being in the AAA. And I feel like a guy like Lourdes Goriel Jr. does not want to go back to the AAA Buffalo. So I like, feel like a guy like him um, really benefited from that AAA role. So, as I spoke about Eric Sogard, we also have Rowdy Telez, who, speaking about Rowdy Telez, 
tied a, made history last night, hitting Grand Slam um, in the sixth inning. Which was the second Grand Slam of his Blue Jay as a rookie, which is a Blue Jays record. So I feel like congratulations to Rowdy for breaking that record. And it's always exciting to see Rowdy's pop as a Blue Jays. We have been um, seeing some disappointing Blue Jays this year. Um, this past week, Randall Gritchick has been really struggling. Um, it's, his batting drop average has dropped to 221. He only has an on base of 280. He's lacking a 411 and an OPS of 691. He has 12 home runs, but simply not going to cut it. And with this extension, I feel like we got hype about it too early and. We gave in too early, and we're not trying to. I'm not trying to write off his season, but personally, feel like he should have done more to to really solidify his role as a team. And as an outfielder, um, he's very solid, solidifying the the outfield defense. And uh, he's been really nice um, as a outfielder for the Blue Jays past All Star break. So to write him off right now would be silly of me, but. Past, there's always a chance of post All Star break where last year he hit over 280. So we're going to give him a chance, but it's been disappointing this past week to see him struggle, chase bad pitches, and to have zero play discipline. Teoscar Hernandez has also been up and down for me, hitting 205 now. He had a strong game these past couple of days, and Teoscar Hernandez has been a, a Blue Jay that. Starting in center field, so I want you guys to also comment how you feel on Teoscar Hernandez um, in center field and how you feel about that, what, any concerns you have with that. Personally, he's been fine, but to me, kind of looks like he looks so unnatural in uh, center field right now. And that goes to show it's his first first couple career games in center field. But for the Montoya, he's just looking for guys to play the outfield. Billy McKinney, he was set back to the AAA we're waiting for Dalton Pompey to get healthy, so hopefully he can um, provide a, the the Jays' need in center field. But for now, we're going to have to deal with players like Teoscar Hernandez. By any means, Teoscar Hernandez has been playing some solid D as of late. But he just it's not the traditional center field we need, and he should stick in the corner outfield, in my honest opinion. Speaking about the outfield transitions, we had Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who was placed in left field, and my own man has he shined in that role. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. has shined in that role simply, um, and simply has been really, um, really it looks really natural out there in uh, in the he's looked really natural out there in the outfield. He's been playing left field, and we saw that amazing catch. Go check it out. It is on my video. I posted it. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. I posted a video where he caught. He ran um, almost like a 100-yard dash to get the ball full speed and still caught the ball. And Buck Martinez on the broadcast said he's never seen an outfield do to that. To, so it shows how natural he looks. And in Cuba down there, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. did play some outfield over there. And he's really been flourishing down in the uh, Cuba in terms of... He'd flourished down there in Cuba, and it, it's translated up in the big leagues. We see Lourdes Gurriel have a very strong arm. And that was a problem with the second base uh, for Lourdes Gurriel. The shows were th simply th uh, too um, short for him. And as a baseball player, um, I mainly play on the, uh, the right side of the infield. And whenever I'm transitioning to second base, it's very weird for me to play because your throw your throw angle is very different and uh, it's shorter. It's a shorter distance to throw. And I feel like a guy like Lourdes Gurriel Jr., he throws his ball in a loose motion where he has a lot of strength. And in the outfield, he has more freedom in terms of throw. And we've seen a couple of great relay throws. We've seen a couple of great throws by Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Um, to the cutoff man. And he's even um, gotten a few uh, runners down. And he's been a really strong outfield, and he should stick there for his future play. And I feel like um, he should be the super utility man on any team. But personally, left field, left field should be his um, his desired spot, and it should be his permanent spot. So we got some uh, some news earlier this week. We got Stroman to the Yankees. Yes, Marcus Stroman. Uh, 
has been rumored into being traded to the New York Yankees. Um, a couple reports say um, that the deal 